Dr. Burke is a PhD scientist retired from the Department of Medicine at the University of Colorado Medical School. He has since worked with several light therapy companies as medical director. His research expertise lies in the area of poor circulation, cardiovascular and renal in particular. As such, he began studying the role of nitric oxide, the body's natural vasodilator, in the early 1990s. Today, he lectures nationally and internationally on the modulation of nitric oxide to reduce isochemic pain, to prevent and or heal wounds, and to improve gait and balance, especially in senior citizens. Okay, so if you have a nose, it's probably a good thing if you increase circulation. For example, and I know some of you haven't had dinner yet, so bear with me. This poor lady, as you can see in the far left-hand side, has four fingers, not five. One of them has already been amputated. Why do you amputate a finger in a patient with Raynaud's disease? Because the circulation is so poor that they eventually get ulcers and gangrene and they have to cut the finger off to save the patient. This poor lady had uh, Raynaud's disease and scleroderma on top of it. And the little description down in the lower left-hand side, I'll read it to you if you're in the back of the room. She had these three ulcers on her fingers when we saw her. And it was looking kind of bad that she may lose one or more of those digits in addition to the one she had already lost. These are the treatments she had received over a six-month period prior to July of 2005 in 19 office visits to physicians. She had received Vicodin, Percocet, and Methadone. Those were three for her pain. She had been given Viagra, which is a vasodilator, as you know if you also watch television. The little blue pill, okay. Uh, Procardia, a cardiac vasodilator. Pregnizone, which is a steroid. Remember steroids I told you? Decrease nitric oxide production? Well, you may get temporary pain relief, but you're not doing much for those ulcers. She was given carpal tunnel surgery. She had both uh, nerves on both of her arteries in her wrist cut uh, to try to increase circulation. Nothing worked. So here she is with all those treatments over a six month period. On the right hand side is a picture of her same hand two weeks after starting infrared light therapy. It was given three times a week, 25 minutes each treatment in someone's office. The results at two weeks, as you can see that one finger, the ulcer is virtually gone. Her pain is now significantly reduced. Now, why would that be? Pain, cyclic GMP, just like morphine, nitric oxide, nitric oxide, okay, okay. Ulcer goes away, better circulation, pain goes away. Her range of motion is now beginning to increase. She was working with an occupational therapist. After seven weeks, shown on the left-hand side, virtually all three digits have no ulcers. There's actually a tiny one still on this one finger here on the far left hand side. At this point, seven weeks in, she's off all of her narcotics. She's able to button her clothes and do needlework with those fingers. And she was discharged to home because Raynaud's is a chronic disease, as is scleroderma with a home Avalon unit, a unit that the patient can use and treat themselves every day without coming in three times a week to the office or to the, to the clinic. And the final photo, uh, as you can see, shows a nice pink, healthy, reasonably healthy uh, three fingers, um, and she was pretty happy. No surgery, no drugs, non-invasive, drug-free. You will walk on water, ladies and gentlemen. You will walk on water. This happens to be a wound on the leg of a horse. And before treatment, this wound looked like dried bacon. And the beauty is we took an infrared pad and just treated the right-hand side of that wound, not the left. And all of the pus and edema 
leaked out of the side we treated, inches away, no change. That's how precise you can target the need to improve blood flow in your particular clients. So if, this is, if they believe it, surgeons believe it, and now there's a tool that does increase nitric oxide and does improve circulation, it might be useful in situations like this. This 88-year-old lady, Health, um, uh, uh, Health South uh, facility in Denver, was facing an amputation in February of 1999. As you can see in the picture on the left, in January, the reason the surgeon was considering an amputation was because she had an infected ulcer on the back of her leg. She was a diabetic. She had a lot of edema. Her skin was all red. She had a flaking skin. And he said, we just can't heal this. We're going to do surgery and amputate an 88-year-old lady's leg below the knee. That's a death sentence. He said to a physical therapist who was using light therapy, why don't you try light therapy on this lady? I'll give you a month. And the physical therapist had her brought in three times a week over a period of a month's time and treated the back of her leg over that ulcer, much as like would be done with any Avalon technology. And after a month, the color in her leg is improving. All the sloughing skin is gone. The wound now has edges. It's called marginalized. It actually doesn't look like it's spreading everywhere, but it actually looks like it might have the ability to close. The surgeon said, let's cancel the surgery. Let's keep going. Do whatever you're doing now. Keep going. And a month later, another picture showed that her wound now was almost gone. And the final picture, in a little less than three months, treated three times a week in an outpatient clinic by a physical therapist using just light therapy, was able to save an amputation in an 88-year-old lady. You will walk on water, folks, I'm telling you. Someone has had knee surgery, it's great, but you're 60, 68 years old, you can't get physical therapy to help you increase your range of motion because there's swelling and infection and edema. Again, light therapy improvements over a month's time, again, three times a week. This is a venous stasis ulcer in the upper left-hand side, 1997. This was a veteran, um, and he was a Marine, and he had had this ulcer on his leg for 40 years, even during the service. They would almost heal, break down, almost heal, break down. He would go every two weeks to the podiatry clinic at the, universe, at the VA hospital in Denver, they could never get it to heal. It took five months, and again, he, was, he received an infrared light therapy device to use at home every morning for 30 minutes over that ulcer while he was eating breakfast, reading a newspaper, having a bowl of cereal, watching the Today Show. 30 minutes once a day. It took five months, but over that five months it healed. The point here is that after five months, we stopped treating him, took the unit back. You don't need it anymore. Eat your cereal, read your newspaper. Here's the wound five months, four months later. Still looks great. Hadn't broken down again. I saw him last January, 2009. Again, 11 years later, his leg looks beautiful. If you have peripheral artery disease and you're not taking Plavix, you may throw blood clots. And those blood clots can end up in your toes, as happened to this young woman at um, Herman Hospital in Houston, Texas. Um, and the doctor who was treating her was using light therapy to reduce the pain from this gangrene that had set in in those toes. They knew they were going to amputate. Gangrene is a death sentence, unless you cut those toes off. So she was using light therapy to reduce the pain of this lady because she had been taking eight Vicodin a day. She didn't take a picture of the foot. Four weeks into treatment, the lady is saying to the doctor, hey, I'm only taking one Vicodin a day. The doctor says, what? Yeah. 
the necrotic eschar, which is the scab, is beginning to lift off. Pain has gone down. The necrotic eschar is beginning to lift off as the light therapy not only reduces pain, but improves circulation to what was previously gangrenous tissue. And here, 20 weeks of treatment on the far right-hand side show you that those toes were viable. This little girl, 12 years old, 1998, comes from a family that has herpes virus from generation to generation. What the immunological defense mechanism breakdown is, I don't know. But she came in one day, and only one half of her face was functional, if you will. She could smile, close her eyelid, but only one half of the face did that. That's called post-herpetic Bell's palsy. She was given a light therapy device to use at home. She used it at home 20 minutes a day. One week later, she was better. Bell's palsy was completely gone. We did not get her back in the office until the following week. So that's her picture two weeks out. Bell's palsy in a 12-year-old girl, May, still in school. Oh, kids, kids are awful, OK? You will walk on water. This picture was taken in 1998 of a gentleman's leg. He had a steel plate and some screws. I think you can appreciate that on the x-ray in his leg for a previous fracture six years earlier. The day before this x-ray was taken, he jumped off a diving board and his leg broke in the exact same spot. And that's this little gray line. The surgeon said to him, son, I have no place to put metal and screws in your leg. I don't know whether we can heal this. You may get osteomyelitis. You may lose this leg. You're 25 years old. You may be 100% disabled the rest of your life. We gave him a light therapy device. He treated himself a half hour in the morning and a half hour in the afternoon, every day at home. <clears throat> and six weeks later, the second x-ray shows a callus formation right over the spot where that fracture was, non-invasively, drug-free, no surgery. We let him use the device for another 40 or so days, took it back from him, he had complete healing of that bone, went on to a productive and successful life without being on disability. This is called a Jones fracture. It's a fracture in the bone at the bottom of the foot. It's extremely painful. This was incurred by a, di with a, by a, a chiropractor, 35-year-old female chiropractor, and she couldn't see patients because she couldn't stand on her foot. No progress had been made by radiologists, orthopods, uh, uh, naturopaths, anybody in three months. And she came to us. We gave her a light therapy device. She put it on her foot every day. And in three weeks, that Jones fracture, which are notoriously hard to heal, was completely healed. This is a horse's leg. And this horse um, in um, Littleton, Colorado, was owned by a 16-year-old girl. It was a barrel racing horse. <clears throat> and it caught its leg in a trailer door and tried to saw it off. Horses don't like to get confined and trapped. So the leg got stuck in the door of the trailer, and he tried to cut it off. or pull back, and he got a wound that went from, if you will, mid-thigh, across the knee, and down to the outside ankle. That's what that wound looked like. This was uh, a study done by uh, Dr. Charlie Vale at Littleton Large Animal Hospital using light therapy. Let me see if this will play. Now here's a horse in a stall, not too sterile. This is the scar that's left from that wound. In other words, not only did skin grow back, hair grew back as well. The horse went back to barrel racing. When I say you will walk on water, you will walk on water. <clears throat> 